uh, it's really a challenge for me to to give a talk without singing. So I'm going to start out with a song that's about remembering uh, who we are. So I, I sing that song uh, um, for us to remember we're on a journey together. We're on a life journey together. Um, and for me on my journey, it's, um, well, it's been very much about listening to uh, this mind that is very, very busy 
there's a saying I forget in uh, in some that I heard somewhere that the mind is a terrible place to hang out in a bad neighborhood. And uh, mm -hmm. I like that in the sense that um, usually the mind is twirling on and on about uh, things from our past, worrying about the future, um, triggers from our past, wounds from our past, and somehow they continue on and on. The mind just rolls and rolls and rolls. And I recall someone saying recently that I heard, I was listening to why we tend to gather up all of our, our thoughts, the, the negative thoughts, the triggering thoughts, the wounded thoughts, and we carry them everywhere with us. And we just carry them forward. And they came from way back when, and we bring them forward. So uh, my journey, and I'm sure all of our journey is about that Buddha nature, that wonderful Buddha nature. And I, I've been meditating on and off for the last um, 40 years, but most most consistently in the last 20 years when I came to this Sangha. And now it is just a permanent part of uh, my life. And uh, But there are definite times where I forget, but it's getting more and more where I don't forget, and that has come from this practice. Um, and there's all, if you don't know it, mindfulness is very popular these days. So what we do is very, very popular. And that's great, we got a head start on it. Um, and for me, the Buddha nature is finding that place uh, of compassion, of happiness, of joy. Um, and some people might think that it's Pollyanna. I actually think that it's pretty amazing and wonderful uh, because there have been times in my life, many times now, so more since I've been practicing, that I stay more in that place and I'm, I'm able to transcend what the mind is doing. And I'm going to refer to it as the mind. A lot of us call it my mind. Uh, I don't even want to claim that. Uh, I'll claim that if I go in the refrigerator and I know that I need milk, that my mind's going to say, well, you're going to have to go to the grocery store to get milk. Um, that's what the mind is useful for, to tell you those day-to-day -day things that you need, those useful things. Uh, otherwise, for me, it's, oh, man, it's talking all kinds of, all kinds of garbage. So um, I uh, thought of this pocket mindfulness with a friend of mine who's in a 12-step a, a program and in a group therapy was telling me about they were doing pocket mindfulness. And so I thought about all the tools that through all of my life that I've used um, to transcend thought, to transcend that conflict. Uh, um, and I started out years ago with when, when I was living here in New York, I'm back in New York City, uh, with a Japanese tradition called Nishiren Shoshu Buddhism. And uh, their, their phrase was Namyoho Renge Kyo, which means I fully embrace my Buddha nature. I'm determined to embrace my Buddha nature. And I did that for, for many years. Namyoho Renge Kyo, Namyoho Renge Kyo. It's beautiful, it's amazing, and loved it. Um, and then I moved on, and I've always been a seeker. I've always thought there's more, there's more beyond what, uh, what this mind uh, is thinking. And I moved to an Indian philosophy and the, the mantra was Om Namah Shivaya, which once again, these all have kind of the same thing in common. Om Namah Shivaya was the take away darkness and the bringer of light. And then I've finally rested here uh, with Amitabha, infinite light, um, Buddhism, I am home. Um, and so there are many ways. I'm going to tell you one, uh, one tool, which when my friend told me about it, I thought, oh, that's so silly, but we actually used it and did it. And uh, whenever you have, and we were actually kind of having a conflict, and he said to me, well, let's just stop and do, you know, do this tool that I learned. So this tool is basically in your mind, or you can do it with somebody, but when you have stressful thoughts, you, you name a, a, a famous person. And I know this seems so unholy and not, you know, Buddhist-like, but it really, really, it's a mindful technique and it's really great. And so you name a famous person. So we'll go with Bob Newhart. And so then you take the beginning letter of the last name of that person and you name another person that's famous. So 
in my mind, I'll say Bob Newhart, and the next name that comes up is Nancy Reagan. And then uh, that's an R at the end. And so the next thing that comes up for me is Robert De Niro. And you let this play out in your mind, and I've done this with my friend, and I've done it with myself, and the next thing you know, that stressful thought is gone, has disappeared. You, you're like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty amazing. It has disappeared. Um, because as I said before, the mind will, it will do what it wants if, if, we don't, if we don't jump in there sometimes and just go, oh, huh, we can't have that going on. Uh, or we get to notice what's happening. That's a, another technique is noticing and saying, oh, that's an interesting thought. Thank you very much, but no thank you right now. Um, uh, of course, as we know with how we practice, there's breathing techniques. And this one is called the four, seven, eight breathing. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that at all. Yes, raise hands, anybody? Oh, okay, good, <laughs> kind of. The four, seven, eight breathing uh, is to activate your parasympathetic uh, system, which promotes relaxation. And it deactivates our sympathetic system, which is the fight um, or flight response. And so what you do is that you breathe in uh, through your nose for four counts, and then you hold for seven counts, and then you blow it out through your mouth for eight counts. And you do it four times in a row. So uh, let's, let's try it. Let's, let's all do that. Let's, um, and I'll count us in when I say the word breathe. That's when we're going to begin. So let's all close our eyes. And at one, two, ready, breathe in, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blow it out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blow it out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, breathe in, two, three, four, blow it out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that was supposed to be a hold, blow it out now, one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, breathe in, two, three, four, and hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, blow it out, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's a sample of that. Um, and you do do that four times. And examples of when you can do that, it's when anytime that you're experiencing any kind of stress or stressful thoughts um, before giving a speech. <laughs> or giving a talk at a sangha, you can do that, or a presentation at school or at work um, during exams. Um, you can also, I've done it at night to fall asleep. It's very, very helpful. It's very, very relaxing. I've done it the first thing in the morning um, when I wake up. Um, so you get the, the gist of that. If you're feeling overwhelmed, anxious, or stressed, you can do it as well. Um, Something that I came up to, to, that popped into my mind that when I was in England, when you're on the tube there or the subway, they say, mind the gap. And for some reason, uh, when I was preparing for this, um, that came up in my mind, mind the gap. So there is a, a wonderful thing where you breathe in. If you inhale and right at the height of it, kind of stay right there before you exhale, there's a gap right there. And in that gap, there's nothing. There's total silence. And then you exhale. And at the bottom of the exhale, there's another gap. It's total silence. So if you'd like to, we can try that right now. It's just simply inhaling, holding, 
and exhale hold it inhale hold it exhale hold it so for me that that really really works and i love experiencing that gap because there's there's nothingness there there's no thing there um the next thing and i'm sure these these may be things that we're all aware of but it's always good to be reminded and i have to preface all of this with i'm no aficionado on it i'm not perfect at uh all of this um i haven't transcended um but i'm working at it i'm working at it uh the next the next thing that works for me uh for mindfulness is in the moment gratitude in the moment gratitude so anytime i'm uh i find myself just going off into cuckoo crazy or the mind not my mind but the mind going off into cuckoo crazy I begin to start spilling out what I'm grateful for. I can look around. I can just say, well, I'm grateful for my apartment. I'm grateful for my guitar. I'm grateful for uh, the clothing that I have on. I'm grateful for the food that I had for lunch. Just anything, anything that will start moving, moving that, that energy. Uh, and it all is energy. The words are energy. We are energy. Um, I don't know how it is for other people, but... Um, these words do have power. Amitabha does have power. I am home does have power. Uh, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo has power. Om Namah Shivaya has power. It all has power and it shifts our energy. And I think it's really important the work that we do. Um, and I, I call it work, it is a practice, but um, it's an order for us when we begin to transcend more and find more moments of peace within ourselves and compassion within ourselves, then we're able to go out into the world and be that around other people. Now, I'm not saying our, that's our purpose and that's what we were supposed to do and try and change other people. No, it's just our natural inclination while we do this practice that we're gonna end up more compassionate, more thoughtful, more wisdom, more peaceful, more quiet. And that does affect our surrounding and it does affect the people that we come in contact with. And that's why this is ever so important. Um, another technique is just simply stop. And look around at your surroundings. And what do you see? What do you hear? Touch something. And notice what you're touching. It brings you back to the present. It brings you back to your Buddha nature. Um, I want to share with you, uh, I've been blogging lately, and I want to share with you a couple of the blogs that I did. Um, I feel like part of my journey is acceptance. And I, I read an article years ago when I was a much younger woman. And uh, it said, as people get older, they get set in their ways. And for some reason, I thought to myself, well, I don't want to do that because it's going to make me grumpy. I feel like I'm probably not going to be happy if I get set in my ways. That's not a good idea. So I've made it a point to become as flexible as I possibly can in interacting with people and preferences and so forth and trying to, you know, uh, get advantages in situations, um, trying to get ahead, things like that. Um, so I, I view acceptance uh, as, uh, um, letting life flow, you know, unless, unless someone's physically hurting you or what have you, but acceptance and just seeing, well, okay, this is what is here now. Let me flow with that. Let me stay at peace. And sometimes in the moments of peace, when you're accepting, then you see the answer or the solution to the situation. So I wrote this, a little rain never hurt anybody. 
I got caught in the rain this morning, not just a minor drizzle, but a downpour with thunder and lightning in a whole nine yards. And I found myself scurrying quickly across New York City streets as puddles quickly formed, dodging them as best I could. But then I remember an old boyfriend who had said to me during a wind and rainstorm, except where you are, don't run from it. It makes it worse, become one with it. There are so many moments in the day when I want circumstances to be, to be different, but it only causes me agitation, frustration, and annoyance um, when I wish things to be different than they are. There is something about acceptance. It doesn't mean we lay down and throw in the towel. It simply means we notice what is happening and we say, okay, this is what is right now at this moment. If we can change the circumstances, that's fine. But if we're stuck out in the rain, I suppose we could run for cover or what's so wrong with just letting the rain fall. It's like taking a shower with our clothes on, laugh out loud. So I didn't rush or run or seek cover. I just kept walking and accepted that I was getting wetter and wetter. It felt good just to be in the rain. It's not like I was going to melt or there's something or that something would happen to me. Whenever we can replace what could be a potential stressor into acceptance is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. And acceptance can equal peace and calm. If it is a life circumstance I'm dealing with, I'm better equipped to make a decision from peace and calm than agitation and frustration. So I, I don't know what others have thought about that or, or experience, their experience with acceptance, but uh, for me it has, has been a, a lifesaver. Um, and then, uh, there's so there's, I mean, there's so much more that I, that I could say. One of the other things, um, is everything's figure outable is a phrase that I heard. And I tend to, if something breaks down, if a car breaks down or something happens with the refrigerator or whatever, the television, I, the mind can freak out and go, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Da, 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 da. But I heard this phrase, everything's figure outable. And when I come from that angle that everything is figure outable, then it brings me to a place of peace and calm and knowing. And in the in that place, then you can you can figure it out, whether it be that you call someone to help you figure it out that's more knowledgeable in that situation or what have you. Um, so those are just a few things. My how the time goes by. Um, so that is my uh, my talk today, and I don't know if I've gone past my time, but thank you all very much. <laughs>